afternoon and welcome to day two of the 2017 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup here in Durango, Colorado. It's the final day of the competition and we're going to see the men's and ladies titles decided tonight. The ladies will be climbing first and very soon we'll be seeing those results. First, let's recap on where we are here in Durango. Durango, Colorado, we're the far southwestern corner of the state of Colorado. We're situated right where the mountains pretty much hit the desert. So we're just north of the New Mexico border. We got skiing minutes to the north, desert minutes to the south. All of that just, it comes down to this little central spot and it's the town of Durango. The entire population of town is around 16,000. It's an old mining town. A lot of outdoor activity here. A river runs right through the middle of town. Everybody in town skis here. Everybody climbs here. And uh, there's great ice climbing literally just up the highway. The thing about Durango is that it's far removed from big cities. The closest big city is Albuquerque, which is about a three and a half hour drive. The beauty of Durango is it's a small enough town that everybody really gets along and looks out for each other. It's a special place. Yesterday's semifinals were jam packed with action. And in fact, we made the front cover of the Durango Herald. The locals have had a great time, and so too have the athletes. We caught up with Ema Swiggan to check out what she thought of her competition yesterday. My name is Ema McSwiggan, and I'm climbing um, for Mountaineer in Ireland. I prepare, I guess, all year round. You're always thinking about it. But from August, I normally start training specifically for ice climbing. I live in South Korea and there's amazing training facilities there. I have an amazing coach and a really great team that I train with. Yeah, so almost every day it's, it's what I'm doing. <laughs> but first competition of the year is always a bit nerve-wracking. So I guess the qualification round, I, was, I felt really nervous and just a little bit awkward. And I did okay in one route and then the second route I, I found it really difficult and in the semi-final I, I guess I felt more at ease. There was maybe a little bit of confusion about the clock because I heard someone say that I'd only four seconds left so I, I just started climbing really fast. I was, I was lucky <laughs> I guess and actually there was more time than four seconds left so I got higher than I expected. Um, it was my lucky day. <laughs> it was my goal to make finals so um, anything will be good, <laughs> but I'll try my best, hopefully. <laughs> ...on the wall, but we've managed to get those fixed and we are ready to go. I am joined this evening and very pleased to welcome Katie Bono. Hello. Liam, thanks so much for having me. I'm How are really you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to see these women compete tonight. That's awesome. How was your competition yesterday? Oh, my competition yesterday was, it was honestly a bit of a rough go, but I have a lot of luck in competitions normally, so if I have some bad luck, sometimes it's, it's gotta be okay, I guess. Well, taking the rough with the smooth, let's find out what some of the other competitors thought about the competition. One word, how was today? It was a beautiful day. Unbelievably epic. Definitely exciting for me. Exhilarating. Inspiration. A round of applause from the crowd. Spectacular. Educational. It was wet. <laughs> it was wet. That's all I can say. Very wet. <laughs> Great to see so many people enjoying themselves there despite the inclement conditions yesterday. Thankfully, the weather is significantly better today. Katie. Let's take a look at those results from yesterday.
Or maybe we won't look at those results. Don't worry about that. What was the highlight of the competition for you yesterday, Katie? Uh, you know, I think the highlight for me was uh, just having this competition happen in the first place. I mean, this this particular World Cup was organized with only a few months of lead time. So uh, generally, it takes a lot longer to organize. So the fact that it happened at all is just really spectacular. It's a great credit to the organizers. And of Absolutely. course, there are the results from yesterday. So we had uh, in 10th place, Olga Kozak, 9th place, and so close, Inika Raybergen of Canada. The finalists for tonight will be Mariam Filipova, uh, Nadia Galyamova, Maria Tolokonina, Hannah Raisong, Angelica Reiner, Masha Edler, Elon McSwiggan, and Woon Seon Shin, who took first place in what was a spectacular ladies' semi-final yesterday. Ema McSwiggan, for me, was one of those highlights, and we just saw that short videotape with her. She fought so hard in that qualifier, in the, sorry, Absolutely. in the semi-final yesterday, and particularly at the top, I actually had a chat with her after the competition, and she said to me, and I'm gonna ask you about this in a second, she said to me, I heard the uh, compare shout four seconds left, and I just thought, oh, I'm gonna try as hard as I can and see where I get to. And actually, the compare had said one minute and four seconds, so she just went hell for leather. <laughs> <laughs> tried as hard as she could and, and got so high and nearly topped out on the route. The question to you is, how um, how much of a part does the compare on the ground, the person who's addressing the crowd, how much of a part does that play in what you're doing? Uh, I think it depends. I know that oftentimes I, I can really hear like a lot of the things that the louder uh, spectators or commentators are saying, and I can definitely um, calibrate off of that. Um, but I think it's really really a testament to, to her physical ability that she was able to crush that hard for the last minute. And uh, I think it'll be really exciting to see how she does today. Definitely. And of course, we've got some very esteemed names amongst that start list. The starting order will be as follows. We'll have Miriam Filipova out first, followed by Nadia Galliamova, and then in third place, Maria Tolokanina. Uh, sorry, out third will be Maria Tolokanina. Of course, Maria took the overall title last year. She won three of the four rounds. When you're out there competing and you know, you've got these big names, quote unquote, you know, does that affect your performance? What's going through your mind when you're seeing these people on the competition uh, arena? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, I think it's important to not get, uh, not get headed out by the fact that you're competing against all these really good competitors because everybody has bad days. Everyone has days where they compete out of their mind, like Noah Beak yesterday in the men's qualifiers. And uh, so you really just have to focus in and do your own thing. And of course, you're a, a local athlete. You're based out of here in Durango, but you're not from Durango. No, no. And I actually live in Boulder, Colorado, which is about six hours away. I meant Colorado. And, uh, <laughs> um, but I'm from Minnesota originally. Cool. So. And so, in fact, that means you're not the only Minnesotan because Carter and Kendra are Minnesotan. It's true. It's true. The, uh, the Stritch siblings are and... Either Rebecca Lewis or Nathan Kutcher are also, one of them is from Minnesota. I don't remember which one, but uh, we have a pretty good uh, Midwestern contingent here for sure. How was the semifinals route for you? Oh, the semifinals route was, it was not as good as I had hoped. There were some pretty tough moves down low and I'm generally more of an endurance athlete and this particular comp, because the wall is so short, all of the individual moves are really, really hard. So people with a lot of power are really gonna do well. It's a very today. bouldery style, you could Absolutely. say. Absolutely. So, uh, if you are tuning in, again, welcome. It's great to have you on board. If you're just joining us, I'm Liam Lonsdale, and I'm joined tonight by Katie Bono. Um, we are, of course, broadcasting live on YouTube and Facebook, uh, and you can join in with the conversation both on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, by dropping us a comment or a tweet using that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. It's on your screen now. Drop in that. Hashtag when you're talking and we'll be able to see those things. We'll try and give you a shout out. We'll answer your questions. Uh, whatever it is, get it in there on the comments and on Twitter. Uh, we love to engage with you here at the UIAA. There's one of the B layers getting ready and prepped. It's much colder this evening. We've got a very clear sky. I haven't actually seen the temperature. Do you know what we're on? I don't know the temperature. Um, I would guess it's somewhere in uh, probably in like the 20s Fahrenheit. Um, wow. Yeah. Who would you say is a, a strong contender for tonight? Uh, you know, I think that um, I think Maria could have a chance to do really well, but I also think uh, we should look to see how Angelica does. Angela took Angelica took last year off to do more competing or to m do more climbing outside. Yeah. 
and climb all around, and she's looking to come back and, and dominate uh, again this year. So. And she's looking unbelievably strong as well. Absolutely, yeah, and she has a lot of experience and uh, knows how to move through this terrain. So we're almost ready to get going here. Uh, the route setters are just making their final uh, sort tweaks. I want to uh, just talk about that thing in the top of the screen there, that large box. So if, if you watched yesterday, you'll have seen that we had uh, the main standing structure about 12 meters high. Uh, and now we have some additional parts of the structure, some additional elements. There we go. These two boxes. Tell us about those, Katie. Yeah, so we uh, looks like we have some dangling boxes uh, that were installed this afternoon, and that will be uh, the end of the route. And uh, so it's a really good way to uh, to end the route in a way that really uh, uses people's physical strength because all of a sudden you're going completely horizontal now on uh, holds that are actually moving. Um, so it really adds an element of difficulty. And. Uh when it comes to actually climbing on those things, not only are the holds moving, but you're moving as well. Yeah, exactly. Is an element of coordination required? Element of coordination and element of uh, keeping your body stable and uh, really engaging your core. And also just not getting too freaked out by the fact that you're moving, just really being able to focus and uh, climb within yourself. You can see there the big red flag, the Scar Brewing Company. A big shout out to those guys. They've been absolutely wonderful hosts over the past couple of days uh, here in Durango. A big, big shout out to those guys here at the Scar Brew House in Durango. And I'd like to, at this point, give a big shout out to the QTV Sports crew. QTV Sports are the broadcast team uh, behind this uh, wonderful broadcast that you see in. They've come all the way from Glasgow and they're going to be following us around for the whole tour. Um, so, yeah, big shout out to those guys. And of course, uh, massive props to all the guys and the local organizer team, all the volunteers. It's, there's just so many people that are absolutely crucial to this event. The crowd's filling up out there, even despite this very cold weather. And we should be joined by our first athlete almost imminently, who will, of course, be Mariam Filipova. Let's see what she makes of this. You can see on the left-hand side there, Dave Dorian, one of our judges. And there's Mariam Filipova. Yeah, the Russians have a really strong tradition of doing well in the, uh, the Ice Climbing World Cups. So it looks like four of the eight competitors tonight are from Russia. Where does that come from? You know, I think a lot of it comes from the uh, their focus on sports in Russia. A lot of the their team sports are, or a lot of their sports are funded by the government. Uh -huh. And that makes a big difference um, because they can train a lot more without having to, to work. Well, Mariam Filipova is no stranger to finals. She made all four finals, or rather all three of the finals that she competed in last year. She finished sixth overall. Uh, she made finals in Bozeman, in uh, Sazfe, and also in Rabenstein. And she actually podiumed in both of those events, taking third place uh, in those latter two events. So here we see the route for the first time as Mariam gets off on the first part of the route. Just looking up, using her hand there just to work out the best part of that low hold. We saw a lot of climbers falling down very low on the route yesterday, so she'll be very conscious of that, looking to do as much. Excellent. Yeah, there we go. That's so making a huge move low on the route. As a, as a competitor, how hard would it be to be the first one out? Um, you know, it's... Uh, Everyone's operating on the same the same amount of time having seen the route and so it's uh, honestly I like it sometimes because you don't have to wait in isolation just getting more and more nervous. Would you say there's less pressure? Um I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then then you get to watch everyone for the rest of the the time which can be honestly really fun. So she drops in that deep fig four on the left there. Reaches up to the top of that brown volume to one of those steel plated holds on the back ahead of the axe, just shifting ever so slightly as she matches in, kicks in hard. She's gonna look to make that clip, but not before getting that left fig four in. Sitting in deep on that. Great clip from Marianne Filipova. Now, interestingly, I was talking to a couple of the guys this morning over breakfast, and they were saying sometimes uh, later through the competition, i.e. if you're not first, the holds can actually become a little bit better. 
with wear from the from the picks. Does that go through your mind at all when you're competing, or are you just taking it as it comes? You know, I think that might be the case that that happens, absolutely, because the picks are super sharp, but at the same time, you can't let yourself think about that. You just have to think that, like, you're going to do your thing and do give all that you can give. So well, I'm sure she's not thinking about that at all. Good. Here she goes deep on that stein there and just shifts at the back, not cranking quite as hard as she could there. She goes leaning straight back off it, just taking a little bit of rest. And now these athletes have a lot more time than they did yesterday. They only had four minutes to climb the route yesterday, whereas today they've got a whole three and a half minutes extra with a seven minute 30 slot in total. And she busts up dynamically to the left hand there. Drops another fig four in, really precise, really controlled movement. Yeah, Ma that was a strong move for her, going straight from an undercling to another undercling. Um, she's, I mean, we'll have to see how everyone else does, but that was, she's having a good go, it looks like. She's just taking her time. She knows she's got plenty of time on the clock. Just working out the best method. Drops in the fig four on the right hand this time. takes what looks like a very, very small placement on the left hand, kicks in hard. Marianne Filipova's 34 years old, part of a very strong Russian team, as Katie said before. 50% of our finalists this evening coming from Russia. So Katie, we're watching Mariam shaking out, taking her time. What do you think of the route as we've seen it so far? Um, you know, in keeping with, with all the routes uh, this weekend, it looks like there are some really big, powerful moves. Um, it looks like there aren't any moves that are really directional so far, uh -huh. uh, which is a really nice thing to have. Look uh, at her reaching this down, down there. climbing right here is really interesting. You don't see that that often, but I think that the organizers were trying to make make good use of the wall that they had. Really making the most of that competition structure, Absolutely. taking in all of the width and height this time. Whereas yesterday when we had climbers uh, participating simultaneously, the ladies are given a stage of their own this evening, as will the men's later. Just to give you an update on that, we will be going to the men's broadcast after a short break between the ladies and the men's. So once the ladies is finished, we'll give you the results uh, and then we'll go off air and then you can join us again for the men's broadcast about 50 minutes after that. So here's Marianne Filipova dropping that fig four in over the right arm, just struggling to get the pick out there of that Stein, but no problem. She always looks very composed, I think, Marianne. She does, yes. And I think she's really trying to uh, be deliberate about these moves because um, because they are big and they are tricky, so it's, it's good to know where you're going. Flicks into the fig nine. Again, just taking her time. She's about 50% of the way up the wall, but she's not 50% of the way up the route because of course she's got to climb up to those suspended boxes and then reverse down through them. So she's probably got another 60% of the route to go and she's only got two minutes and 12 seconds left on the clock. So she's got quite some ground to make up if she wants to at least get to the top. That's true. That being said, these routes have proved pretty tough for a lot of the competitors, and some of them have not even been topped out. And so um, her progress so far might still be fairly admirable. So here she goes, just working out what to do. She just heard the compares say how much time she's got left, so she'll be ready to get a move on now. And we saw this hold in the comp yesterday. Very tricky one to take. A lot of precision required, and even when you get it, it's not very positive. She's throwing up for it. Close, but not quite. And that hold is so far away. So far. What would you do here, Katie? Uh, probably just what she's doing, trying to recover on that hold that she's on until she can just regain enough power to go for it. So lots of people are tuning in on Facebook. JoJo's tuned in all the way from Bozeman. Jeff Devitt. We've got people... All over the world, tuning in, Brona Walsh, who's a Ema McSwiggan fan. She'll have to wait a long time for Ema, who qualified second, so will be the penultimate climber. Lots of Ema McSwiggan fans tuning in. Don't forget, you can get in touch on Twitter and Facebook. Drop us a comment 
or use that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Marian Filipova, with just less than a minute on the clock, is going to have to pull out something miraculous if she wants to hit that hold. She's generating momentum with a swing, reaches up, just misses it, but still manages to stay composed. 40 seconds on the clock. And I think Breathing. right now she's just trying to regain as much as she can to just make, make a couple Hail, Hail Mary moves at that last hold. And she'll know that this is a big move and the other competitors are going to struggle too. She hits oh, it. Awesome. Great effort. Yeah. Cuts loose on that one arm with 23 seconds. She's got to do everything she can now to get to that next clip and, of course, the next hold. She's going to be trying to get as many points as possible. Makes that clip seemingly a bit of rope drag there. Oh, and she's made the next hold. Awesome. Not quite oh. placing that hold. Oh, that she's really like struggling. To hold too. Three, two, one, and that's her time up. She jumps down. And a great effort from Malian Filipova. She looks, I'm not sure whether she's psyched or frustrated. It's very rare to see emotion from the Russians. That is true. That is true. They, they always tend to be very straight down the line, very focused, even after they fall. So that was, uh, that was interesting to see that screen. Let's have a look at one of the replays. So she's there in that fig four after sticking that move. Just couldn't quite find a sweet spot on that hold. Looks similar to the one that we saw yesterday when they were taking it around the backside. So as we look at it on the left side, we'll have to wait and see if Nadia Galyamova will be able to work out where that placement is. So of course, next up will be Nadia Galyamova of Russia. Our second Russian athlete of the evening. One of the things that I really love about this competition, Katie, is the camaraderie between all the athletes. Yeah, what? absolutely. I think that's something that's pretty special to the, the ice climbing uh, community just because it is a little bit smaller and, um, yeah, people see each other all year long. So It's so nice to see people help each other out, people cheering each other on, the general psych. So we're waiting for our second athlete to join us. There's some of our local organizers doing their best helping out. b layer trying to stay warm there. Doing a little shoulder shake, classic warm up. In the lower half of your screen in the orange jacket is Lee Spokas. We interviewed Lee just before we went live on the broadcast yesterday. Lee's one of the judges and was trained out in Bozeman. One of only three American UIAA judges. And in fact, I found out that Dirk Tyler, her colleague, is going to be the first American judge to judge outside of the States. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, he's going out to Chung Song this year uh, as part of the judging crew. So yeah, very cool that the Americans can start to tour with the tour as well. Absolutely. So, Nadia Galyamova just getting herself tied in. It looks like Andres Maris, Marin is the belayer for, for the evening for the women. Andres is a former competitor on the World Cup as well. And so uh, you could say that they're in safe hands tonight. Absolutely. I know that he caught me uh, yesterday on some on a, a little bit of a dicey fall, so he, he knows what he's doing for sure. I'm sure the athletes will be relieved to know that. Yes. Oh, I remember that fall. <laughs> it was a spicy one. It was. Now, uh, speaking of spicy, you had some spicy headwear. I did. Maybe you can talk us through that. Sure. Yeah, I had um, I had a pair of lemur ears. Oh, they were helmet. lemurs. They were lemur ears. I thought they were panda ears. You know, they're both both of those work. But I uh, I dressed up for Halloween, um, and I, I we had a, a day that we were climbing outside, and the rule was everyone had to have something dangling as part of their costume. So I was a lemur, and I had a lemur tail, and then I just sort of left the ears on because they're pretty hilarious. Well, yeah, they are, and they certainly caused a bit of commotion amongst the. Uh, the athletes and the judges and the spectators, lots of people liked to see them. So here's Nadia Galyamova, the 28-year-old Russian. Very, very talented climber. And of course, last year, Nadia finished eighth overall. At the Bozeman event last year, she took fourth place. She finished 20th in Cheongsong, 13th in Saz Fei and seventh in Ravenstein, and she'll be looking to better all of those results here tonight. So moving up on those initial moves very, very quickly indeed. I'd say a little bit quicker than Mariam was. 
And she uh, did very well in the speed competition this morning, actually. She got either first or second place, uh, so she does know how to move fast. So she isn't just a lead climber, she climbs very well in speed as well. Yeah. And of course, if you're wondering where the speed broadcast was, um, there was no speed broadcast because it wasn't a UIAA sanctioned event. It was just a North American championship that anyone could partake in. Um, how important is it to have competitions like this in the United States? Oh, I think it's huge. I, um, I think the U.S. is incredibly lucky to be able to have um, competitions here as far as uh, fostering uh, local participation and really growing the, the North American um, com competition community in ice climbing. And of course, Marcus Garcia, who's the main event director here, has that youth program Absolutely. Um, and has so many participants within that. Yeah, he is doing huge things for, uh, for the comp climbing community in the States, for sure. So, Mariam Filipova reaches into that Stein. Very small, but solid placement. Cranks deep and back on that one. What's going through her head at this point? Two minutes have gone. You know, I think she's probably just trying to uh, get the nerves out. Oftentimes, the first few holds when you're just getting on, you it's a little bit nerve wracking. Uh -huh. And uh, it takes a little bit, at least for me, to, to ease into the rhythm. And um, she's probably just really focusing on, on climbing smoothly and climbing efficiently. Well, she's moved very smoothly up into that left position, into that hooking position. And again, up into that right hand placement on one of those very small edges. Yeah, and that hold is definitely has a little bit of directional um, angle to it. So she's probably being really careful to stay static on that hold. And, and so for the viewers back home, explain what you mean when you say directional. Yeah, so uh, the, a directional hold is if you pull straight down on it, there's a good chance that it will uh, your tool will slip off of it. So it's only good if you pull on it from an angle. And as you can see, that's exactly what she's doing. And she reaches over to the underside of that big Colorado painted volume and leans in moving her body weight across and this is the point where she's got to switch hands take that as a backhand just trying to adjust her feet there and then reach down into that stein and you can see that stein's two colors it's red on the top and gray on the bottom for those that don't know the red is an out of bounds area Nadia Galliamova just bouncing down into that stein very very strong holding it hard making sure that her pick doesn't shift so the grey bit is inbound and the red is out and you can see the hole she's moving to is painted in a similar fashion. Let's see what she makes of this move. Reaches up to make that clip for the traversing section. Just shaking out, taking her time. Still plenty of time to go, 3 minutes and 43 seconds on the clock. And she's probably trying to recover a little bit from that that down climbing. Even though you're going down, it can be a lot, a lot of body tension to, to keep it together while your weight is all falling down onto that lower tool. So and you could see that in her movement as well. It was quite, um, ooh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not uncontrolled, but it was definitely faster than the other moves. She like dropped into it. There's one of those golf ball holds that we saw yesterday in the semifinals. It looks positive, but... Uh, it looks positive, but <laughs> something that you could definitely, if you, if you moved around too much on it, did a sloppy sloppy next move, you could definitely slip off. So she yeah. drops the fig foreign on the left. And she almost has that statically. Oh, she's so close. Just a matter of an inch. She's going to switch out of that fig four. I'm going to try to recover here a little bit. Resting in a fig nine. Two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Still plenty of time. But it was, in fact, this point where we saw Mariam Filipova lose most of her time, just trying to work out what to do here. Yeah, it looks like this move is going to be a hard move for, for a lot of the women tonight. And, of course, some of the taller competitors might have an advantage. Although neither Mariam nor Nadia are shorter, I would say probably our tallest competitor this evening is uh, Wunsion Shin, maybe. Um, I haven't measured them all. Yeah, I, I can say certainly Angelica is not tall. No, neither is Ema. So, just trying to work out what to do. Composing herself, 1 minute 58 on the clock. So she's there now, she's been there for over a minute. 
Yep, she knows like she's got a big move ahead of her. How do you move on mentally from a position like that? Because, um, you know, do you go for it? Do you not? Do you play it safe? At what point do you say, right, I'm going for it? Uh, I think when you're when you're recovering on the hold, it starts to become less effective. And you realize, oh, I have to go for it now, and I'm going to try to like use the best technique I can. You can see she was working her foot that wasn't over her arm up high on the wall so she can push off with it better. And, uh, yeah. Let's see what she does this time. She drops in that fig four again over the left hand, kicks up high with the right. Oh, oh. she was ever so close. And there she goes. Nice. She's got it. One minute and five seconds on the clock. Now's a chance to move up with conviction and see if she can better that result of her Russian compatriot who climbed just before her, Marianne Filipova. So Nadia Galyamova looking for that next hole in that next clip. Matches in, changes her mind. She's got 40 seconds. Crowd are getting behind her now. Reaches up from that fig four, makes the clip. 30 seconds on the clock to make sense of that hold and she looks a little bit higher than Mariam was. She's not finding the right position. Could it be that that's a Stein? It's hard to tell. It looks like it might be something you just have to really push into in a really shouldery direction of uh -huh. move. Um, I was just looking at the steel plate and it almost looks like the scuffing below, but they've got a much better view than we have, so it must be the top. Oh, and she's oh, and shouldering she it really well. It. Awesome work. Four seconds on the clock, and, and that's going to put her into first. For the next move. Oh, and she's oh. hit it, and that's the time. Watch your head on the axe. She's keeping her head down. She knows her axe is still up there. Hopefully, it'll stay up there and someone can retrieve it. Don't want any accidents. And there's a man with a pole. Awesome, awesome effort there from Nadia Galyamova. And of course, beating the first result of Mariam Filipova. You can see in the replay. Oh, there you go. There's the axe. Let's get that axe down. I wonder whose job it is to poke the axe down. Heads. Luckily, it doesn't hit anyone. So, next up, another Russian. Last year's overall winner, Maria Tolokonina. She did a great job just then. Maria Tolokonina qualifying not in her usual first place, down in sixth place yesterday. Interestingly with Maria, she's probably the shortest competitor in the finals, but easily one of the most powerful. Absolutely. And I think that uh, the final results from, from semifinals yesterday aren't necessarily super indicative of the, the overall women because this route is short. Every, every move towards the hold counts, and so even though there ended up being an overall ranking, it wasn't, it's really tight finish among everyone. And there was a lot of competitors tied, in fact, wasn't there? Exactly. Here we see Nadia Galyamova just reaching out for that hold that she finally found the right direction to use it on and that Filipova didn't quite find, but with the rush and the uh, time running down on her, she just didn't quite have the time to get it. And that was the point that she caught the jug. And that was the point that she timed out. And there is another view of that competition wall and the crowd in front of it. And of course, those two rather large boxes. Some of the crowd. The lady in the green bag is Leanne Hazard, Canadian team physio for this event. She's been fixing up all of the Canadian athletes while they've been here. So let's see where we are with those next athletes and of course, Maria Tolokonina out next. Don't forget you can get in touch on social media if you want to get in touch. Use that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Or if you want to get uh, in touch on Facebook, you can leave a comment below the broadcast and we'll do our very best to give you a shout out, answer your questions or whatever it is that you are getting in touch for. Yesterday, Lots and lots of people left comments. In fact, Steph Mahalati and her friends up in the north were very vocal. And I missed those comments, so sincere apologies to Steph and the crew. And I did say that I'd give them a shout out today. And Steph was a competitor here last year. She so was in it's Bozeman. Great to see that, uh, it's great to see that they're psyched even if they couldn't make it this And weekend. even Steph placed third 
and the speed, if I remember rightly, in Bozeman last year. You know what? I think she got second because I got third. Well, there you go. Yeah. Bad stats from Liam Lonsdale. Great stats <laughs> from Katie Bono. And there, of course, is Maria Tolokonina. Interesting fact about Maria. Her father is Mr. Pavel Shabalin. Pavel is one of the members of the Ice Climbing Commission and also a judge for the UIA ice climbing events. The whole family involved in ice climbing. So she just makes her final preparations, matches those axes on the first hold, and off she goes. Roman Chernov's got in touch from Kirov. It's 3.45 a.m. That is dedication. Roman, that is dedication. Air fives from Katie and I. Great job. So moves up, crossed over on that right hand. Oh no! Oh. So unlucky. Oh. I can't believe what I've just seen. I'm speechless, and that is a rarity. Maria Tolokanina, last year's overall champion, just popped off the, one of the first moves, and we did see that a lot yesterday. Let's see what happened there. So she looks like she's tangled in the quick draw. Slightly off balance, kicks in on the volume. She's over that left hand, and as she places that, or goes to place the left foot, boom. Yeah, she was all tangled up in there. You can see the, the uh, handle of the axe in the rope. What a nightmare. She will not be happy with that. Such a shame for Maria Tolokanina. Oh, gutted. Well, there's one thing for sure. She'll be back in fine form in Beijing, Cheongsong, Sasfe, Rabenstein and Champagny. She's doing the whole tour this season as far as I'm aware. Expect big things from her. And so, much quicker than we were anticipating and I'm sure much quicker than Hannah Rai's song was anticipating, we have our fourth competitor this evening and our fifth place qualifier the 23 year old Korean Hannah Rai Song Hannah Rai was slightly disappointed with her semi-finals yesterday and in fact didn't think she'd made finals but as you were kind of hinting at before Katie that was for a lot of people what they thought you know with the low the, the bouldery problems people were popping off lower than they were expecting but in fact what she did was enough to get her in there absolutely the Koreans also have a rather formidable team absolutely yeah the Koreans and the Russians both have a really strong community and they I'm sure they're competing against each other all the time in practice and I think that's huge for, for, for growing as a climber. And it seems that the the countries or the teams that do the best are the ones that have the permanent facilities to train on. Yeah, absolutely. Which kind of makes sense really. Although I know a lot of the uh, US team have got homemade facilities. That's true, yeah. We have a lot of homemade gyms. Um, and then, but the, uh, it, I think you have a good point though because the Canadians have become much much stronger in the last few years and part of that is because of the homemade structure that Gord MacArthur has built in his backyard and since then he upgraded to a full-on climbing gym that he now owns of and course runs. the Arc Mountain Centre and uh, yeah and that has been huge for developing some of the younger Canadian climbing climbers like Inika and Noah and of course Inika is so so close to making finals yesterday she was actually tied with eighth place they only took eight places through um, and that was down to account back onto the qualifying rounds. And of course, Noah, who you mentioned, Noah Bake, made the finals, his first ever senior final, and a fantastic effort from him. And just goes to show how good a coach and how motivated Gordon MacArthur is, as you just mentioned. So here goes Hannah Rai Song on those initial moves. Just skipping up there. One thing that was uh, pointed out yesterday, I had Ian Hansen up here commentating with me, was the different tools. Uh, and actually, it seems to be a trend between the different countries that different countries have different tools. Maybe you can explain a little bit about that. Yeah, true. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the countries uh, that have a lot of people here competing um, have have really interesting tools that they use. Um, most, like for example, most of the Americans use stock tools that they will also use ice climbing and things like this. And 
Uh, by st stock, you mean ones that you can just buy off the shelf in a climbing shop, for example? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you, a lot of the tools that the international folk uh, are using, you can buy stock as well, but mm -hmm. they come in much, much smaller quantities. Some of them are custom. They're very, very optimized for this kind of climbing. Mm -hmm. If you tried to ice climb with them, you would have a very hard time. <laughs> um, but for something like this, they're they're really amazing. And they have extended shaft handles. Yep. Different types of pick. They have cheeks on the side. All sorts of triggers added in. It's they they are really quite impressive. But of course, the tool restrictions will be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The tool restrictor? Yeah, there we go. Well, well they're still strict now. They're just going to be reduced, right? Yeah. You're going to lose five centimeters five both centimeters directions. Five centimeters in each yep. For next year. So let's go back to Hannah Rai. She's moving very well into that Stein pull on that blue hold there. And this is the point where she's going to have to move up and left easily to that edge. Right on the tip of her tool there. Matches in on that. Five minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. So she's going to match in on that and then reach across to the underside of that Colorado volume. And then we're going to see that powerful down climbing move to the red and grey Stein. There she goes. Oh, oh, oh no! no just smashes into the wall and let's see a replay of that because something popped and everything followed another very low fall surprisingly so looks like she might be a bit winded yeah from she moved really well through that first section too watch the left tool oh it's the right foot that popped yeah ah and then she face planted almost so that's two low falls that we've seen there and actually Nadia Galimova and Marian Filipova, who we thought maybe hadn't got as far as they could, mm -hmm. are both looking very strong all of a sudden with two of the favourites not making it to the same high point. Hmm. The plot thickens. I think it's fair to say... I can't speak. I think it's fair to say she'll be disappointed with that. Yeah. How do you pick yourself up and sort of move on from that for the next competition? You know, I think positive self-talk is always is always a good strategy. <laughs> Sometimes it's more successful than others, but this is the first comp of the year, so there's a lot left to look forward to, and that's probably what a lot of these girls are telling themselves. And of course, this here we can see the point where she fell off again, so that right foot, she kicks in, but it doesn't look great that it's seated, and then it pops, boom, and then everything goes. Such a shame. She was so close to holding it, but not close enough. And of course, as you said, it is the first comp of the season and it's a nice long season this year with six competitions in total. Of course, this is the first year in Durango. There's Angelica Reiner, our fifth competitor this evening. The Italian climber is very, very strong and will be looking to get higher than, obviously, than all the other competitors. She's going to get herself tied in, make some final preps, get that big jacket off. Here's another question for you, Katie. When you're uh, stood there at the bottom of the wall in your lovely warm down jacket, and then you have to take it off, do you not feel cold? Uh, not, not too cold. You have a lot of adrenaline, and uh, I think a lot of women try to come into uh, climbing really warm. So she was probably in the tent sweating in her down jacket so that when she took it off, she would feel comfortable. Uh -huh. So they're probably really warmed up and really Thanking ready to go. Thanking the warmth almost. Exactly. <laughs> There's Xiong Park. So Angelica Reiner just getting the final preparations on the way before she makes her attempt at this lady's final route. Kicks in and reaches up to begin her attempt. If you want to cheer on your favourite athlete, maybe you want to shout out, maybe you want to ask a question to myself or to Katie, and you can do that on social media. Stick your question in the comment here on Facebook, or why not use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing on Twitter or on Facebook? And we'll do our best to answer those questions. There's Angelica reaching up 
with that left hand. Drops that fig four in and reaches up nice and deep in the lock to the right hand. Matches in. Moving quite cautiously, I'd say, so far. Yeah. But she, uh, she, you know, she. this is her first serious season um, back in competition. Like, she's been competing the past few years, but she's definitely made an effort to grow her versatility as a climber. She's been doing a bunch of really, really exciting outdoor climbing. She's climbed some of the hardest uh, mixed routes in the world the past couple of years outdoors, which a lot of women on the circuit don't, don't do as much. So um, she's just starting to settle into that World Cup routine again. And she's looking very, very strong indeed. Angelica finished overall last year in seventh place. She finished third in Bozeman, fourth in Sazfe, and fifth in Rabenstein. She's up on that hold now where she's going to reach up to that blue edge, slightly directional, pulls with that left hand down. And this is the point where we saw Hannah Rai Song fall. No fall in there from Angelica Reiner, who has a much higher right foot placement at this point. Looking a lot more stable and a lot more in control. Now she's going like to have to readjust. Sorry, Katie, go on. Oh, it looks like she's memorized these moves in her head while she was sitting in ISO. She's moving so quickly and so methodically through them. Very methodically and reaches down and so, so calm into that Stein pull that she down climbs into. She's going to have to do the big reach to make that clip. And sometimes clipping's as hard as doing a move, no? Absolutely. Drops in the fig foot. Right at full stretch to make that clip. At this point, Katie, I'd say that she's making it look quite easy. She really is. She looks super relaxed. And it's this point that we saw both Mariam and Nadia with about two and a half minutes on the clock. She's standing there with four minutes 30 on the clock. Absolutely. And hopefully she is has a lot in reserve because she's going to need it for this next move. Let's see what she does. This is going to be that big lock and we saw all climbers not being able to reach it from the fig form. They had to go dynamically. Is she going to have worked that out first time? She just takes a minute, sits right down onto that big orange blocks volume shaking out in the lower part of the axe here she goes again bumps up that lower left foot to go for the pop and she hits oh, it nice. awesome effort in the fig four very precise with that right tool very precise indeed just a few millimeters of contact between the steel and that resin hold reaches up again in the fig four to make the clip And this is where she's going to have to do that hard shoulder move that you mentioned before. We did see Nadia Galyamova taking this hold in control. Let's see if Angelica can work out exactly how to do it. Really shouldery, powerful move. You got it, Angelica. Looks like she's going to try and match him. We saw how Nadia did this move. How would you try this one, Katie? Oh, you know, I think that it's uh, it's just really all about the foot positioning on this because that's going to make a huge difference into how she can sink into that hold. You can see she's having really trouble getting manner. it to sit. The left. But it looks like she's getting a better angle on it. There yeah, she goes. Nice. Gets a weight underneath it, moving really confidently at this point. Up into that right hand with two minutes and 44 seconds on the clock. So much time. May we actually see... Angelica oh, reaching the drag. box. So much rope drag. That rope drag's going to play havoc as she moves back out onto those wooden boxes, those free hanging cubes. So for someone that doesn't know, can you explain what rope drag is, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just uh, the friction of the rope on the, uh, the things that it's running around and touching. So she just fixed her drag which is exciting. So she just pulls the rope over those obstructions, over those volumes, so that it can run freely between all the different quick draws. Exactly. Shaking out, looks back at the crowd just to check the clock. She's still got two minutes or just less 
She knows that she's got plenty of time to get out onto those boxes. Let's see what she can do with it. Bated breath as we wait for Angelica Reiner. Reaches across onto that left hand. Cuts loose all the way over. Did see the axe just shift there and the box swings. This is where things start to get exciting. In the fig nine as she reaches over. You can see the dragon, how hard it is for her to pull that. Very hard work. And this is all more tiring. She's literally battling gravity the whole time here, hanging from those picks. Reaches onto that golf ball. She's going to try and pass the clip and use her body weight to pull the rope through, it would seem. Into the fig nine. Kicks into the corner of that box into the ply. Oh, she's put a heel hook on. Just doing anything she can to stay on. She is fighting, but that face says otherwise. She looks very calm. It's more confusion than anything else. Oh, she sticks it. Now she needs to make that clip, and she's used her body weight to pull it through. She's still got time. Oh, she cuts loose, and she's tiring now. Kicks hard into the underside of that box, making those crampons work for her. But they're not doing... Come on, Angelica, fight! Oh, and she drops, and the pick drops just behind her. What an awesome effort. With 27 seconds left on the clock, she waves to the crowd and thanks them for their support. Will that be enough for Angelica Reiner? We'll have to wait and see. Awesome effort. That was a really great effort. Great to see her getting up there on the box. I imagine she's really frustrated with that rope drag. It would be really hard to, uh, to feel like you could clip, but there was too much going on. But that's the name of the game, too. And definitely as she moved further through, using her body weight to pull the rope, we saw that it was maybe the best solution, but she'd already tied herself out by this point. So, we see the replay, and she looks so solid on that right foot where we saw Hannah Rai Song fall. Angelica looked, well, just very, very casual indeed. Makes that high clip, and this was the point where she dropped into that fig four and latched the hold with such precision. So, so fast, and like you say, very methodical through that movement. And this was the point we saw on the box, the first climber to make it that far. Big shout out to Rock Noir. They've got in touch to say that they're supporting Angelica. Don't forget, if you want to get in touch, you can use that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. And there is Masha Edler of Russia. If I'm not mistaken, Masha is our youngest finalist this evening. Our fourth Russian competitor of the final. She had a pretty good season last year, finishing 13th overall. She took the sixth place in the finals in Cheongsong. Didn't make finals in Sazfei or Rabenstein, finishing 11th and 17th, respectively. Let's see if she can better her personal best from last year. Tonight, here in Durango. Takes off that jacket. Gets herself ready to go. Shrug of the shoulders, takes her axes, kicks in, and off she goes. Seven and a half minutes on the clock for Masha Edler of Russia. So kicking in very, very quickly. And I'd say that's one of the things that sets apart the best competitors is the speed of the kicking. They always kick first time. They always kick very precisely. Absolutely, and you can tell that they've practiced this a lot. And that's one of the things that, I guess, if you don't have a ply facility in your hometown or at least within a, a drivable distance, that's one of the big disadvantages. Is you're not used to kicking into plywood. That's very true. And I know that a lot of competitors, the World Cup is the, a lot of the competitors that don't necessarily win the World Cups, they, they only practice on plywood during the World Cups. And uh, 
So yeah, familiarity is huge. Yeah, and of course, with the Russians having several world-class training facilities to train on, it's obvious why they're so good. So, clipping in with that left hand as she makes the big long reach, the first of the big long reaches up to that left hand edge. Matches into take it as a right hand backhand and then comes back to the left. Oh no! Oh. Another pop! She looks so solid there. She was so smooth, yeah. I'm speechless again. Two top level Russian competitors just dropping out there. Is the pressure getting to them? What is it? You know, I think it's it's maybe the pressure, but it's also just the, the difficulty of each of these individual moves. Uh, the, this route is really favoring people that can uh, not not rest on their laurels and just be super focused on uh, on keeping it together and, and she, keeping the angles good. She's taking those deep breaths, just trying to compose herself. Here we go, this is the moment. So she had the left the left hand placed. She readjusted a couple of times on this on this axe placement. Six, seven, six, they had the right hand on. Now yeah, just watch the head of the axe, just on the contact. One, one, just on the tip of the pick. There, boom, and the, the back twisted ever so just slightly. Just rotated out just a bit, yeah. Out of there. What a shame. And well, I mean, this is leaving it all open for Angelica Reiner at the moment, who's sitting sweet in first place. Ema McSwigan is our next competitor. Ema of Ireland, who based, is based in South Korea. Shocked herself yesterday, apparently. Uh, there's a video, in fact, on Facebook uh, of her performance yesterday, a little clip showing her semi-finals attempt. It's a massive highlight for a lot of people here because she just climbed out of her skin and did such a good job. She climbed so well. And uh, I remember last year in Bozeman, um, I don't remember her exact placement, placing, but she did far, far better. She has done far better this year so far than, than how she fared last year. Always wears green, Ema. It's crazy. Do you think it's that's crazy. because she's Irish? Maybe. <laughs> So Ema in Bozeman last year, just to uh, give you the history on that result, placed 13th. She finished in the top 10. She finished 10th overall. She finished 7th in Cheongsong, which was her best result and her only final of the season. Coming into this competition, she didn't really have any expectations. She's got a second place in the semi-final. She's already beaten her best last year. What's, you know, what, what's in her head now, do you think? You know, I think she's probably trying to, to keep the pressure on, on herself low. It's really easy to get all tied up in this excitement of doing way better than, than you think. And I'm sure she's just trying to keep the expectations off of herself because she knows that's how she competes the best. Ima is taught and coached by uh, the Korean team. It's one of the really nice things to see is the teams working together. They treat her like one of their own. And in fact, uh, one of the Korean headsetters calls Ima his student. Uh, he was beaming yesterday after Ima's performance was very pleased to tell me that Ema was in the finals in second place. So that's great to see. So Ema just moving quite tentatively on these lower moves. It must be hard to find the balance between moving fast and confident and slow and precise. It really is, that's true. She reaches over, taking the weight on that left placement, keeping a weight on her left foot. Reaches up, looking for the best position on that left edge. So definitely moving a little bit slower than some of the other competitors. That's not, so, not necessarily a bad thing at this stage. Right hand up to that little grey edge. She may be going for the strategy of knowing that these route, these moves are all very technical and very hard, and so she is just trying to move carefully through them because it's not a route that's going to be how fast you can move through it. It's just a matter of not falling for the most part. Not falling is definitely one of the names of the game, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Roman Chernov's tweeted us again, and he said he has some inside info that Masha Edler is actually trained by Alexi Dengin. Alexi Dengin, one of our finalists later on in the men's competition and that she's been training for several weeks in Kirov, uh, one of the biggest structures in Russia, before coming out here to Durango. 
So Ema's in that Stein. At this stage, I would say that Ema's looking like she just wants to climb and not fall off. She doesn't look like she's attacking it for the win. She just, look like, just looks like she's going to put in the most solid performance that she can. Absolutely, just staying staying well within herself. Oh, and very smooth up to that left-hand yeah, placement. That was great. And she's got it in the reverse position to Masha had it. So that'll be interesting to see how much rotation there is. In fact, it looks like there's zero rotation as she reaches up for that right hand. Places that tiny, tiny edge under the tool. Matches in. Just shaking out. Four minutes and 48 seconds on the clock. Now at this point, Angelica was all the way on the other side of the traverse. That gives you some context into how fast Angelica was and how slow, for want of a better word, Ema is. Certainly no points for speed. It's all about holds touched and clips clipped. So, reaches over to the underside of that right volume. And her foot is kind of between where Hannah Rai Songs was and where Angelica Reiners was. Doesn't look like it's popping at this stage, although the left hand just twangs loose there. No problem, and she takes the left hand underneath, moves down, shakes. She's gonna have to get that body position all the way down. Ema in the right hand, looking very, very good. Moving into that into that Stein, very solid there. Yeah, that was a controlled release. But she's going to have to reach up and make that high clip. Looks like she's going to make the move first. That'll be interesting. She's the first climber we've seen do that. She's going to have to reach high and left now to make that clip. Last year in Cheongsong, we saw people forgetting to clip and having to reverse several moves just to make the clip. Oh, doesn't look to be troubling her. So, of course, you have to clip every clip in sequence. If you skip a clip and clip another one, it's automatic disqualification. Puts the left leg over the right hand for the fig four. Reaches up. She's just struggling now because we saw them clipping in the other position, and this is going to cost her precious time. And, of course, precious energy while she rests in that fig nine. You can hear one of her coaches cheering there. Always very vocal when Ema's climbing. Plenty of time. She reaches up to make that clip, and now, oh, even though she's, she's got, got that clip, she's got to do another big reach to take that high right hand hold. With all the energy that she's wasted, let's hope that she can recover some to make it. Takes the left hand. Really solid and goes for the reach, misses it first time, but I reckon she can get that. She was ever so close. Just going to recover in the fig nine. Over that right hand, places the left again, switches to the fig four. Takes the right hand, reaches up and hits it. Great effort from Ema McSwiggin. Stumbling ever so slightly over the foot placements. Just over a minute and 40 left. Kicks in. And she's just, she definitely looks tentative as to what she should do. She definitely needs to make this clip before she does this, does this move. Makes the clip. Shaking out. And now with one minute and 19 seconds on the clock, she's got to work out this shoulder move. It's a hard move and she needs to rotate the axe and get her shoulder into it and get her weight underneath it. At this point, it's gonna be very hard to hold with all the weight on the right-hand side of her body. Center of gravity way to the right, but she's looking strong there. Very controlled from Ema. Very controlled. Again into the fig four, and at this point, if she can hit this holding control, she's gonna surpass Naji Galyamova's high point, and that's gonna climb her way into second place, especially if she can make this clip. Ema makes the clip and that's a second place for her at the moment. Of course, we've still got Wunshan Shin to climb. 
She takes the left hand up onto that small edge. She's got 30 seconds. She's just gonna have to do everything that she can at this point. Going for the high point. Places that left hand. She Puts the fifth nine. Speed mode now. She certainly is. Climbing with that aggression that we saw yesterday and she drops down in control. Looking really good. Come on, Ema. 10 seconds left. Reaches with that drag, but it's so hard to clip. She needs that clip. And that clip will definitely count in the rankings. Come on, Ema. And her time's up and she's not clipped it. But she did make contact with that hold. And she's going to rest. Will she want to cut loose? I think she'll probably want to make that clip rather than take the lob. Oh gosh, you can see she's not psyched. <laughs> Come on, Ema. There she goes, takes a deep breath. Bit of a crack in the back, but your man on the v lane did a great job. That was such a good go for her. Awesome effort from Ema McSwiggan, yeah. especially after she climbed so slow in those initial stages. She really found the pace towards the end and put in a great attempt on this ladies' final route. She was so close to making that final clip too. So close. And as we saw with Angelica, it really is a case of getting the weight across before you try and make the clip. Let's see that in replay. We can see some of those initial hard moves. takes that left hand side into that undercut and we saw how controlled she was at this point. All the way from Korea, Big move up for that right hand. Oh, and so solid when she hit that in the fig four. And this was where she really picked up the pace. Then cut loose into that box. So solid. And you can see with the blue and white buff, Mr. Oh, he's one of the judges all the way from South Korea. And there is South Korean athlete and our first place qualifier from the semifinals yesterday, Yun Seon Shin. And our last female competitor today. As it stands, Nadia Galyamova will be in third place, Ema McSwiggan in second and Angelica Rayner in the first position. Of course, those are only provisional results. Let's see if Wunsi Shin can do something to upset them. And if anyone can, she can. Very, very strong competitor. There's Ema, having a chat with God MacArthur, good friend of hers. Big hugs and great support all round. Wunsi Shin finished fourth overall last year, taking eighth place in Bozeman, second place in her home comp of Cheongsong. She placed fifth in Sazfei and sixth in Rabenstein. She's in great form at the moment. So let's see how she finishes today. Don't forget, you can get in touch on social media using that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Tweet us. Let us know where you are in the world, where you're tuning in from. It's always great to have you on board. There's the hashtag on your screen. Get your red ticket out too because I have $200 of Adidas shoes I would like to give away. Just getting herself tied in before she begins her climbing. And it looks like Amir is just learning how close, how close the results were. Of course, and her and Angelica are having a chat there and Ian Hansen on hand to have a chat with them too. We'll be joined by Ian Hansen later on for the men's competition. So hopefully he'll be able to give us some inside info into what they were saying. The men's final will begin at 7 p.m. local time. We'll be live streaming it, of course, on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you tune in for that broadcast. As always, send in your comments, send in your questions. We'll do our best to ask the athletes and the commentators whenever we can. Munshin Shin just in a bit of a hang up there with a the tie in. Maybe she's got numb fingers. That big down jacket obstructing her view. She's getting some help from a local organiser.
Good to see the crowd out supporting them all wrapped up warm in their big down jackets. Sorry, in America they call them puffy jackets. Is that right? Both. Both go. Both go. Puffy down jackets. <laughs> Would you ever call them a down puffy jacket? Sure. <laughs> I think Absolutely. you're just humouring me there. So, 7.30 on the clock for Wun Xion Shin, who was taking a moment at the beginning to take a big deep breath and compose herself. Nice shot there. You saw her just closing her eyes and taking a big inhale, exhale before she begins her attempt. Places that left tool. And then you see one of those super light tools that the Koreans use. The extended handle and the added trigger. She is climbing very quickly. She's off climbing the back. super quickly. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of climbing to come. Makes sense that she's moving quick. Once Young Shin's a very rounded competitor, would you say there was one element of her climbing that was a strength? You know, she seems like she's really solid in all disciplines. I haven't spent enough time watching her to know her quirks, but. Certainly from following the tour last tonight. year, she was just a very solid competitor, and either it worked out for her. Or it didn't. It didn't seem to be one underlying thing that uh, that influenced it. It was so hard to put your finger on. But when she is on form, she is easily one of the best athletes. And of course, showed that yesterday, qualifying for first in the semi-finals. And is our final athlete of the women's UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup round here in Durango. Very interesting foot placement as she reaches over. Totally different to any of the other female athletes. Where we saw Angelica Reiner with a super high and super wide right foot. She was on that painted volume, but it's not troubled her. She's moved in control, taking that left hand backhand on the volume, reaching down, shifting the weight across. Oh, wow. Very, very smooth. So smooth indeed into that Stein. And she's reached up and clipped, and that was a key moment for Eamon McSwiggan, she lost a lot of energy, missed clipping that one. But once Yun Shin doesn't make any mistakes there, moves straight across onto that golf ball, throws in that fig four. I have a feeling she's going to hit that first time, and of oh, course she does. So solid. Great climbing so far from Wun Yun Shin. Five minutes and ten seconds on the clock. That's a minute faster than Angelica Reiner, and we thought Angelica was fast. She is really crushing tonight. So she places that left hand tool. No trouble whatsoever. Getting the weight under that left hand. Reaching up for the clip. And there it is. Matches with that tool. And there comes the big lock up to that little grey edge. What would you say that Wun Xiong Shin's done different to everybody else so far, Katie? She is climbing so much faster than everybody else, and it'll be interesting to see if that's just her MO and she can just move that faster if she'll start to pay a price for, for having so little recovery. But yeah, that's right the now one thing it looks like she may pay no price. <laughs> yeah. Really interesting that she's not stopped to shake. She just skipped a move, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe she didn't. I feel like I might be getting confused, but I thought the other climbers went one move higher before they came across. Nevertheless, Wun Xian Chin's not tried to clip yet. Here she goes. Oh, she looks so strong. Loads oh, in the tank. Do you know what? I think we might see a top here. I might have jinxed her. I hope not. <laughs> but she made that clip so easily. Taking her time, just untangling herself from the rope and untangling herself to get into the right orientation to make this next move. Three minutes and 35 on the clock. We saw Angelica Reiner with a bit of time pressure here. But once Yun Shin into the Stein, the first time we've seen anyone get there, drops the fig nine in. Brilliant physicality here from once Yun Shin. Oh, and she's stuck. Oh no, she does oh, not no. want to drop that tool. Well, it's stuck in the rope now. It looks oh no! Like. If she drops it, it's immediate disqualification. And she was so close. That was a moment of relief there for once Yun Shin, because that would have been a terrible mistake to make. So much drag in the system, but with three minutes on the clock, she's got so much time to go. She's using the clip to clip the rope rather than she's the, got rope, the rope, rope on the clip. her knee. Wow, pulling out all the different measures. She just fig fought the rope at this point. 
not too worried. She's taking her time with two minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. Awesome climbing from Munsyon Shin here. And in this point, she's moved ahead of Angelica Reiner and Ema McSwiggan into first place. And the provisional results will see her on the top spot, Angelica in second, and Ema in third, which I'm sure she'll be delighted with. The first podium of the season and the first podium ever. I'd love to see a top here. That would be a brilliant finish and a well-deserved gold medal. At this point, she's almost sat on the box. Just to give you an idea of the angle, she's, that's from directly below her. People really tune her on in the crowd. She's probably trying to figure out how she's supposed to clip the end with so much rope drag. Oh, I mean, such hard moves to make and the rope drag as well as a factor. What do you think will be going through her mind at this point? Perhaps a little bit of confusion about the rope because she didn't get it uh, flipped over the box like Angelica did uh -huh. go down. So she's got a little bit more rope drag to work with. And she probably has no idea that she is crushing so much harder than everybody else right now. And with now. 1 minute 30 on the clock, she's still got plenty of time. Kicks into the underside of that box. Oh, wow. Manages to stick that. Unbelievable. Such <laughs> strong tension there. <laughs> strong in the core and strong in the bicep. Brilliant, brilliant athlete, Wun Xion Shin. Reaches down into the underside of that box. Onto that pink and blue hold. Into the fig four oh, and she's got a minute release. to go. Feels like time stopped that she's got so much time left on the clock. She's got a tool into that final hold. And now... What I think will be the crux is going to be clipping her anchor. Once Yon Shin's going to have to use every trick in the book to clip that last clip. She has 32 seconds to clip that quick drop. 32 seconds on the clock, as you heard our compere say there. 36 year old Once Yon Shin needs to pull something out of the bag here. Match is in. To get a top, she has got to match that tool and clip the anchor. She pulls hard. She needs to put the rope in her teeth, but of course the tool's in her mouth. Come on. Once Yon Shin for the win. Five seconds on the clock. It's not going to happen. But what an awesome effort for Once Yon Shin as she times out. Just too much drag in the system, but a brilliant attempt nonetheless. She needs to just pop off now and take the victory lob. Katie, how extraordinary was that? She really showed today that she was so far above every other woman on this course. She moved with so much deliberate movement. And a huge round of applause from the crowd and from the fellow competitors. And she gives a big hug there to who I believe is the coach. Here it is, Kim Hyung-gun. Very pleased man. Wunsyeon Shin there, well deserved and unofficially will take the gold medal. We have to wait for, of course, the 10 minute period for appeals to be lodged and the judges to sign off on those results. But what an awesome effort. We'll see the crowd now nip back inside to get themselves a beer between the ladies and the men's. So Katie, let's have a quick chat about those overall performances. Eight athletes, Four different countries, Russians not making the podium here. That's true, the Russians did not have a strong showing tonight. That's the first competition of the season, the first time, in fact last year there was always a Russian on the podium, on every comp. Wow. And so the first in over a season, the first time that a Russian's not made the podium. Just goes to show how hard people have been training, how hard these routes were. And sometimes when luck's not on your side, like we saw with Maria Tolokanina, for example, last year's overall winner who just fell so low down almost on the first move. This was the point when Munsyeon Shin almost lost a tool. Just at the point where it was going to fall off, she picked it up. Absolutely. So close, skin of her teeth. I think tonight too speaks to the, the broadening uh, ice climbing community. I, I, Ireland is not known for its ice climbing. No, it's... And she... <laughs> 
showed that she can compete with the best of them. Well, interestingly, Emma McSwiggan actually took up climbing once she moved to South Korea. Before that, six years ago, she'd never ice climbed before. It was only when she moved to South Korea that she took it up. We're going to hopefully have some interviews with our podium uh, positions, or hopefully the winner uh, at some point. Uh, Jack McGill's down there. He's going to be having a chat with Angelica Reiner. Until then, we've got lots of time to talk about the other performances. And hopefully, he'll be chatting to Won Seon Shin too. Ema McSwiggan, Angelica Reiner and Won Seon Shin in third, second and first place. A couple of minutes until we get that. And of course, the appeals process is still underway while we wait to see if anybody has lodged an appeal. Big thank you to the presenting sponsors in the top right hand of your screen, the North Face South Korea, who of course this broadcast would not be possible without, and of course these competitions would not be possible without. We should have an interview right now with Won Seon Shin and Jack McGill. Let's see what she has to say. We're saying congratulations. An amazing climb, how do you feel? This is also uh, uh, first competition of this season. I win, so I'm so happy. It looked a really tough route up there. Can you yeah. tell me how it felt as you were going up? Uh, it was uh, 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 not so many. I, I, I don't have uh, many experience about this movable uh, construction. It was so fun and I feel so hard, but uh, I climb well, so I'm really happy. And tremendous support from everybody down here. Did that spur you on? Did it encourage you? Huh? The support from everybody was amazing, yeah? Yes, I uh, 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 many people cheer on me, so I uh, have more power, so I climbed well. Well, fantastic. Congratulations on that amazing claim. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Jack, and thank you, Won Sun Shin, and congratulations on the first gold medal of the 2017 season. And as we heard there, Katie, Won Sun Shin doesn't have experience with these moving boxes, but climbed them so well. I mean, we maybe saw that in, in her uh, lack of decisions with those movements, but it didn't show very much, did it? No, it did not. How, um, how hard is it to accom uh, accommodate, anticipate the movement of those boxes when you're on there? It's very difficult. And so generally you just end up using a lot more core tension in order to anticipate, even though it ends up being a little bit of wasted energy. Of course. And there's Pavel Dobrinsky and Kim hyung gun two of our setters from the competition. And a big smile on Kim hyung guns face because, of course, one of his athletes takes the top spot and one of his athletes takes the bronze medal, Ema McSwiggan. How must Ema be feeling? Her first final of the season, only a second final ever, and she's got a medal to take home with her. You know, I think she's probably stoked out of her mind and is probably recalibrating the way she's looking at the whole rest of her season. I cannot wait to see the smile on that lady's face in the bar later on. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we don't have time for an interview with Angelica, but just to remind you, we will be coming back shortly at 7 p.m with the men's final broadcast. Do tune in on Facebook or YouTube. Don't forget you can drop all your comments and questions in on Twitter or on Facebook using that hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. Hopefully at some point we'll be able to show you the provisional final results. Katie, this wall, 12 meters high, they've only had four months to build it and it's been really a, a big community effort to get it up there. Um, how was it to climb on? It was a lot of fun. It was, uh it was really difficult, um, each, each move. You really had to dig really deep, and, uh, but I think that made it really exciting as well. And it seemed that that style carried through into the finals as well. Absolutely, that's true. Let's have a look at those provisional results for the women's finals. So in eighth place, and a massive shock, Maria Tolokonina of Russia, last year's champion in the lowest place. And then close behind her, Masha Edler in seventh place, Again with a low fall, sixth place after that nasty foot pop in the right hand move, Hannah Rai Song. Mariam Filipova in fifth place, who fell off after lots of efforts going up to that really tricky left hand placement after the traverse. Nadia Galyamova, who lost her tool 
Dino in for that hold before the boxes takes fourth place and then for your podiums. And we must stress that these are provisional results at this stage, but as it stands, in third place, and what a fantastic weekend for Ireland's Ema McSwigan. In second place, the Italian beast. Angelica Reiner takes her silver medal home with her. And in first place, Korea's very own Wunsyon Shin will be going home with a gold medal. For now, that's all from us. We will be coming back, and we must stress we'll be coming back at 7 p.m. on YouTube and on Facebook. Do tune in. Hashtag UIA Ice Climbing for the comments and the questions. We cannot wait to see you later. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining me. Thank you for having me. I've been Liam Lonsdale and will continue to be Liam Lonsdale for the rest of the evening.